this is uh, Canadian winter. Just got the uh, the Jeep started. It's uh, diesel, so it. Uh, what do you call that? It needs a bit to get going. basically six volt deep cell batteries that have 220 amp hours uh, for 20 hours. That's their that's their capacity. So I'm sorry, 220 amps for 20 hours. That's basically their performance. So I guess the batteries today, there's flooded, there's AGM, which is basically the, the same as flooded except glass filled, and um, the lithium batteries. I decided to go with the traditional flooded batteries for a few reasons. Um, main one being that I don't have a lot of experience yet with the electric motor, so I don't know what its uh, true needs are. Um, I probably could have done with half of the um, amps, like maybe even more. Like so, I'm probably buying too big of a battery. Um, but I just thought about it for a while, and it says, you know, I've played a fair amount of golf in my day, and I know that. Big electric golf carts and they run all day and they're pushing you know a couple hundred pounds uh, and those motors are pretty efficient uh, and they last so I thought well let's just try this for the first round a little bit more maintenance because I'm gonna have to check the fluid levels in them uh, the AGM batteries are a little basically the advantage is less maintenance glass filled <clears throat> they have about the same uh, lifespan but they're sealed batteries, so you don't actually have as much maintenance to do. So for me, maintenance isn't really a big issue. Like just get in there, take the tops off, check the water levels, make sure that they're okay. Um, that kind of thing. I'm not too sure if you're supposed to check the pH balance or not of these things, but I'm going to find out when I talk to uh, the guys over at the battery center. Um, the third kind of battery is lithium. Now, flooded and HEM, you can only run to 50% their rating. So I'm gonna to check today to see if that means that, okay, the 20 hours at 240 amps um, is at the 50% mark, or is that what it's rated and you should really only do 10 hours, not 20 hours, I don't know. But either way, my motor is gonna be drawing uh, probably on average about 40 amps on a very light cruise coming out of the harbor. Uh, and then when I want to go kind of closer to peak speeds, I'm going to need about 80 amps to 100 amps, somewhere in that range. Uh, so 100 amps draw under battery load should technically last for me like 20 to 40 hours uh, with this battery system. So basically I'm buying 48 volts based on uh, six volt deep cell batteries. Uh, the last kind is lithium. So flooded and sealed operate about the same. You can only really run them at about 50%. Uh, but the uh, lithium batteries, you can run them to 80%. So generally speaking, you don't need as large a battery. Uh, so, or if you buy the same size, you can actually run them 30% more uh, than a battery. But that comes with a cost. Um, I think from a maintenance standpoint, they're a lot easier to maintain. Um, everybody that has a laptop is familiar with lithium batteries. That has a, has a smartphone is familiar with lithium batteries, so it seems to me like lithium batteries would be, uh, you know, probably the better solution in the long run because uh, there's a couple of other advantages. They're probably a little bit less hassle-free as long as you get them sized properly and that the amp output matches your load, um, which is the same for any battery, but just something to think about. Uh, but they do last a long time, like in some ba batteries reportedly can last 20 years. If they're 82 kilometers. So here's the uh, batteries. Got a few of them here. Uh, so it's a GC225 6 volt. It says it's 440 at 25 amps. So I think that's minutes. Or 220 at 20 hours, which I think is amps at 220 amps. 
at 20 hours. So it's not 220 amps uh, solid for 20 hours. That's not what that means. That means 220 amps at 20 hours. So if I'm drawing, I guess, how did you figure that out? So if, I guess it'd be 110 by 10 hours. Uh, so it'll be a 10, one battery is 10 amps solid an hour, I guess. No, that doesn't make sense either. So I don't know exactly what that means, but basically 40, 40 minutes at 25 amps. So 20, these are about 220 amp hours, uh, is my guess. Um, and then uh, putting them in series, I'm just going to have uh, a lot more uh, voltage, um, but the same draw. So uh, it should be pretty good. I think it'll be a good solid battery for me, but we'll see how they uh, how they go. Hello, uh, everybody. March 8th today. And uh, I've got my, my gears here for the uh, timing chain on the engine. Uh, so the next few um, days or however long it's going to take is going to get it's going to get me to the point of where I've got a working motor. So I picked up a uh, timing belt, uh, 1.5 inch uh, H style teeth, which is uh, basically uh, the depth and angle, I think, of the teeth. There's different styles. And I picked up some gears and gear attachments. So this is what I got. I'm just gonna be checking them to see how they fit on my um, on the shaft. Uh, one that would go on the motor shaft, and then uh, this one here will be on the uh, shaft on the uh, the prop shaft. So I'm not 100% certain if this is going to work align if I have to move something, but I can't move the prop shaft. Uh, but I can move the um, uh, the motor, so I can move the motor backwards or forwards to kind of fit this, depending upon how I need. Uh, so that's what I want to kind of figure out here today. Basically, is just uh, how can I uh, get this thing aligned properly? Because there's a couple of gears and the belt goes in between. So I'll show you what I mean here. Uh, so down here on the prop shaft, I have to, I've got to get it to about this position. So I'm going to have to build some kind of bracing uh, mechanism to go on this. And these are my two um, connection points. So right now it hits about there. This one's bigger than this one. I don't think this is long enough and I'm not too sure. So I, I have a feeling that I'm going to have to take the... Um, I'm going to bring the motor forward some, I have a feeling, because I can't move this at all. Like, that's impossible. Um, and that also means, I think, that if I have to bring that out, I, my stairs kind of go underneath it. So when I get it all back together, um, I'm going to have to check if the gear pulley is actually touching the stairs and how much I might have to build myself, like, bring the stairs out about, uh, you know, two, three inches. Uh, so yeah, so that's kind of what I'm working on and why it's a concern because uh, as you can see from the angle here This one's a little bit further back than that one uh, so I had intended on putting the Sleeve with the gear out and then this one with the gear in but we'll see how it works Hopefully it works. It works out. I don't need to align anything because I did a best guess uh, But we'll see doing is it's pulling it in tight and the taperedness of the bearing even the key is tight now so basically snugging these in is slowly bringing it uh, tighter on the shaft so that's good on where I wanted it So when I bring that one up, it's pretty close 
so well, it's going to have to come out a bit. So that's how far it's going to come out. It's pretty close for eyeballing it and not knowing the size of the gears when I bought them. All right, so my depth here is uh, 2.6 centimeters. I'll give this a, uh, a wetting. Wetting, not wetting, but wetting. Just to do this last piece here. Uh, so I did the block yesterday. You can see that is very solid now. And uh, that's definitely not going anywhere with all of that fiberglassing put in place. That looks good. So my last thing to do here is just to take this, uh, I think it's called, uh, hmm, I had the name there, it's a bearing, a rider, rider bearing. So basically this uh, bearing is uh, set in place to fix the shaft so the shaft doesn't move. So what I did is um, these uh, bolts go through down into here through this block and the whole block is tied into this here with this other block base. And uh, uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good actually. I like, I'm liking it. Except for the, all the little frays, I'll get rid of those thereafter, but that's no big deal. That's all underneath uh, the things. So underneath here, look nice, we got just enough clearance. So I think that this is gonna work out just fine. Um, this rider bearing is set, there's a collar on it. So that'll stop the shaft from going this way. And right here at this location, this is actually nicely aligned. So what's missing are just a couple of bolts. So I have a couple of bolts here. So I'm gonna use this to, uh, but I don't know how permanent this is going to be. I'm going to try this out. And once I get some tension on this here to pull it down just a little bit, then I'm going to get some um, the proper tension on the belt. But also the shaft will, won't be up at the top here. It'll be uh, pushed down. Well, I'm just doing this video. I was uh, just talking to the marina staff and uh, they've given me some information. Uh, this Canada Coast Guard boat is uh, in the way and apparently they can't get the motors running on it so they're gonna have to delay putting her out and uh, it's in the way of the uh, the boat launch so they we need to move it um, and because they need to move it uh, I've got to get they want to move it beside my boat, where I am on the hard, uh, to do some work on it. But my boat's in the way. They don't want to move it with my boat there. So they're moving my launch date up by three weeks. So my planning just took a curveball on me. Basically, you can see that this is in the way here, in terms of a boat. It needs, this is the slip where I get launched. So, and life in the boatyard. Basically, I've got to get myself, uh, uh, my boat out into the water a week earlier and i got to finish the motor. I wanted to paint the deck and I've got to change my through-haul fittings and the through-haul fittings need a week and I've got basically about 20 days to go to the to launch. Um, somewhere around there, 20, 25, 28 days, something like that. So. Uh, even though you're going to watch this video later, uh, it's interesting what's going to happen. So maybe I'll post this little snippet here as an up interim update. Uh, see if I get my projects done in time. Because <laughs> you could just saw the what the inside of the boat looks like. Uh, yeah, I got a pile to do. Anyways, cheers. Appreciate all the support you guys can give me. Subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Then I have to put it in here flat, flush. And then uh, attach it to both this brace here and this wall. Uh, so I'm going to basically put a bracket in here so that way my 
batteries. So I'm gonna tear it all apart after I build it all and fit it so that I can fiberglass it.